This is a Dreamcast disc and is for use only on a Dreamcast unit. Playing this disc on a hi-fi or other audio equipment can cause serious damage to its speakers. Dreamcast, up to six billion players. Why don't we play together? Hey, 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 it's time to make some crazy money. Are you ready? Here we go! Yeah, 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 yeah. Please stop this disc now. Now, 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 now. Hello and welcome to issue one of the Dreamcast Junkyard Dream Pod. Uh, this is issue one because the last one was called issue zero or episode zero. And I thought that if we jumped straight into episode two, it'd be a bit weird and people might wonder where episode one has gone. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So, uh, hello, my name is Tom and um, joining me today we have pretty much the full team of the Dreamcast Junkyard editorial staff. We have uh, Rob. Hello. And we have Aaron, aka Gagaman. Hello. And joining us, our international team, uh, <laughs> all the way from the, the United States, we've got Caleb. Hello. And we have Xander, who writes on the site as B Sharp Major General. Yes. Hello. Hello. How are we all? Everybody okay? Okay. 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 Excellent. Good. I will say that this is this is kind of like the first time that all of us have actually been in conversational contact with each other. We've all written and emailed each other in the past, but yeah. So this is our kind of first group discussion, as it were. And yeah. what better format to uh, to have it on? Dreamcast Junkyard Dreampod. <laughs> <laughs> I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll jump straight in and just kick off and I will ask you all in no particular order what you've been playing on the Dreamcast, if anything at all. Uh, Caleb? I have gotten my HDMI adapter out and I got my VGA adapter out and I got my uh, Bleemcast disc out and I've been playing the original Metal Gear Solid on my Dreamcast. Oh, awesome. Oh, uh, oh nice. Yes, it, it looks amazing. I've never actually ever played a Metal Gear game in my life. Oh, right. uh, and it's it's really it's interesting because now I get all these old jokes. It's like, oh, I get it. That's that's why they say Kojima's this weird guy who does all this weird stuff in the game. <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> How does it work out with the Dreamcast controller? Uh, basically, you're running all the time unless you go into crawl mode, and uh, that that's how I've been doing doing it. Uh, there might be Did a different way. Did it use the uh, R two and L two then as well? Or? Yes, it uses uh, it uses everything. Is this the uh, separate disc that they released for the Bleemcast, like the proper it is one indeed. that they Oh, okay. Well, so you've got the you've got the official version and not the the bootleg version that I have then. Oh, the beta, <laughs> like the the beta disc, yeah. Yeah, I got a. Uh, I got this on eBay. I actually remember the days when you could go into game stores and actually buy the official Bleemcast discs. Yeah. For a good solid month, that they were in store for about a month where I was, <laughs> and then they all got pulled. Yeah, I've got the uh, Tekken Three one, but I haven't been able to pick up the other two yet. Is it the Gran Turismo Two as well? Because there's three in there. In yeah. yeah, yeah, the other yeah. one's Gran Turismo. Yeah. Uh, in the bootlegs, there's this whole list of games which supposedly work, and so it's interesting. Yeah, none of them can save. None of them can play uh, the FMV cutscenes. The uh, the issue with the uh, Metal Gear Solid one is that you can save, uh, but what happens is there's this weird data leak. So you need to have a dedicated. Uh, you have to have a dedicated VMU because yeah. like it's the same with the Tekken Three one. Yeah, it it, t- it takes an entire memory card up. Yeah, and the file just keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger until it fills up the entire VMU by the end of the game. Oh, that's how it works. Yeah, there's a, there's a similar thing with um, Half Life for the Dreamcast. You need a full VMU because it fills up as you Again, play. Again, it. it's incomplete. Yeah. Um, one other oh. question, Caleb, is I imagine it looks pretty sweet on the um, HD TV. It looks great. I was actually I thought there'd be some strange. I thought there'd be some sort of strange like you know stretching or anything, but uh, so far like the text thing, which is is if you look online you can say well there's this weird text error mm. besides that there's no there's not really any issues okay cool how about you Xander what have you been playing well i actually haven't really been playing much but i started up some sonic adventure and tried to continue grandia 2 last night Okay, cool. And how about how about you, Rob? What have you been playing, if anything? Yeah, the only thing I've touched this week has been Soul Calibur. I, it was sort of Mortal Kombat X week, so uh, I was sort of in the in the sort of the mindset for some fighting games. So the only thing I've actually touched on the Dreamcast is Soul Calibur, which uh, obviously everyone knows is a super fighting game. Um, yeah, but yeah. Uh, if you compare it to uh, 
it or not compare it, but if it's up against Mortal Kombat X on launch week, then it's not going to win. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Soul Calibur, uh, trying to uh, play Maxi well. Instead, oh, of just spam- instead of just spamming. No, some- no, you don't. The whole goal between <laughs> Maxi is you just button mash. Exactly. That's how you play it correctly. <laughs> oh, right. I've been playing it correctly all along then. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same with Killick. I just keep like, mashing all the buttons and just like, hope for the best. <laughs> Soul Calibur really is one of those games where you can train up at it, know all the moves, get it all down, and then you can play against someone that just mashes buttons and they beat you. <laughs> That's right, yeah. It really yeah. is. <laughs> Yeah, no, there, if you get, you have to really concentrate on throws, and then eventually you can just beat somebody who bush, button mashes, but you really got to know how to do the throws. The last thing I played was actually Virtua Striker 2, weirdly. Um, I, I, at the moment, I'm in the middle of moving house, and I've, I'm packing all my stuff up, and as I was moving some of my Dreamcast games, I just noticed the Virtua Striker bo- box. I thought, oh, I've not played that for a while, so I had a quick go on that. And uh, I don't know if you guys are interested in football, st- soccer, as it's called in the uh, in the states. No, I, I loved playing it. It's just I I could never get into sports games like ever. I yeah. mean, the the big thing on the Dreamcast was, of course, always the uh, oh, if I say football, you're just going to be confused. The the hand egg ball <laughs> slash uh, the uh, um, the wimpy uh, the wimpy rugby that we play over here. That's oh. what everybody was playing. <laughs> Uh, but I couldn't get into it, even though the games they looked fun, they were fun to watch. I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. get into them. It's funny you mention like NFL games because I'm, I'm actually, I, I know a guy who lives in Massachusetts somewhere. I, think. I know it's a big place, but um, he's sending me all of the, um, all of the NFL games like 2K, 2K1, and 2K2, and the NCAA games, just because I've never played them because they never got released in the hmm. UK, so I've never had the yeah. chance to actually have a go of them. Um, so yeah, I'm waiting for those to turn up in the post. So that should be yeah, should be fun. Just just beware because I know in one of the uh, major games there's this weird glitch that kind of like breaks the game. Oh, really? So I don't know how you would avoid that because I think somebody would just put that in a strategy guide. But it's just it's this weird little trick you can do, and then just the computer always falls for it. It's so mm. oh weird. <laughs> I'll keep an eye out for that. Yeah, um, I know uh, Virtua Striker too. My dad really got into that back when it came out, but he was always really frustrated with it because yeah. one, you can't see where the goal is because the camera angle is just always just straight on, isn't it? Mm. So he was always kicking the ball and it would just like fly past the goal and stuff. Yeah, it's quite <laughs> annoying as well the way that the computer takes control of your players when you're trying to tackle and it just does this weird sort of tackle over and over again with this yeah. weird sound effect. It's really weird. Oh, yeah, the tackling. I always thought it sounded like um, crashing shopping trolleys. <laughs> sort of like, yeah. kind of noise. It's, um, it's kind of, it looks like football, soccer, and kind of sounds like it, but actually doesn't play anything like it. So it's like a weird aliens version of it. <laughs> what about you, Aaron? Have, have you been playing anything recently on the Dreamcast? Uh, I haven't been playing anything on the Dreamcast this week, but uh, I've been playing the Sega game. I've been playing uh, Fantasy Zone 2 on the 3DS. Okay. Um, it's like uh, M2 actually remade, because Fantasy Zone 2 was like a Master System game. It wasn't in arcade. Okay. But M2 actually remade it using System 16 arcade hardware. <laughs> and it originally came out on the PlayStation 2 on a Fantasy Zone collection in Japan only. But they just this week, I think it was even just yesterday or the day before, they just released it on the 3DS. Oh, wow, it's amazing. I'm actually kind of hooked on it. You do realise this is a Dreamcast podcast, don't you? <laughs> just just wanted to clarify that. <laughs> I know. It's I Sega. Know. It counts. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, guys, um, thanks for that. Uh, it's good to know what everyone's uh, kind of got their head in at the moment. Dreamcast games wise, but I think we should kind of jump into uh, into news um, and something I wanted to discuss. I don't know if anybody else has seen this. Is the news recently that's come about that somebody's actually got Rycast running on a Raspberry Pi two? Oh yeah, yeah, I saw. I think it's really impressive that they're managed to that they're managing to run something like that. I mean, it was only a couple of years ago with Raspberry Pi that you know it was like, well, you can run maybe some SNES emulation on it or something um, if you're lucky. And then, yeah, literally a couple of years down the line, and while it says you know um, it's reported that you know it's not a hundred percent there yet, uh, yeah, I think I think so. it's really cool that they've managed to squeeze that out of it. I mean, how much was it? I forget how much they're going for now. It's about not much. thirty pounds, forty dollars, something like that. It's amazing. I mean, for, for, for quite a few years, I've wanted to do like a custom mini build PC, like get a micro ATX 
case or something and just create sort of hmm. like an emulation machine something yeah. that i yeah. something that i could put in the living room and and i could emulate a lot of old systems on but if they can get something on on the raspberry pi then you know maybe that's the way forwards i presume the uh, raspberry pi 2 is more powerful than the first one yeah it's got slightly updated specs it's got like a faster processor a little bit more ram oh okay i think the only thing holding it back really is the fact that it's got a very not very weak but not extremely powerful gpu um, and ah, that leads yeah. to things like the, especially on the video that I've seen of, um, funnily mm. enough, it's of Soul Calibur running using Rycast. Um, it does stutter a lot. So, I mean, but it's early days yet. And, and for something that's the size of a credit card, I think it's really impressive that they've actually got something like the Dreamcast yeah. running on it. Yeah. I don't know if this if this is something they're still doing, but I seem to remember a couple of years ago, I, I, I heard something coming out of NVIDIA where they were doing sort of like, you know, like an external hard drive. It was like an external GPU that you could literally just like slot in I don't, oh, right. it, I don't know if I don't know if it would be USB because I, I, I don't presume USB has a, a decent enough bandwidth. But I don't know. It was one of those things where you could sort of like plug it into any machine and instantly you've got a bit more GPU power. So I don't know. Maybe you could, oh, wow. maybe you could combine the cool. two. Yeah. Hmm. Caleb, have you seen this at all? Uh, no. I mean, I've I know about the Raspberry Pi. Uh, you know, the whole thing is they're the maker spaces and libraries and stuff. And I am a librarian, so I am aware of the Raspberry Pi, but I just I haven't had a chance to actually look it up because it's just eh. Yeah. It's just I don't I don't. It's like just make a PC. Like just have a <laughs> have a dedicated PC. I think it's really good for like children that want to yeah, get into yeah. programming and stuff like that. It's got to be really good as like educational hardware. I think especially. Yeah. I think that's what it's mainly been pushed as at this point. I'm such a curmudgeon. I'm all, I'm always like just just get like a. Just make a PC and do everything on there, and then it'll be like ten times better. But yeah, then again, these things are like just dirt cheap, and they're easy to uh, yeah. they're easy just to mess around with. So hmm. yeah, I, I kind of I kind of agree. I'm the same. I, I've never really had the I've never really had the urge to buy one a, a Raspberry Pi just because I, I've got other things that do things that that does but better. So why would yeah, I bother? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> Um, say the same about the Uyo, really. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true, yeah. Um, I mean, but like I said earlier, it is, it's an impressive um, piece of, what's the word? Uh, backwards sort of engineering, if you want to call it. Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, Raspberry Pi is uh, an impressive little piece of kit, and getting the Dreamcast running on it is, again, quite impressive. Yeah. I think we should move on, though. On the on the Facebook group, I asked the question last week, um, and the poll was: Everyone's always going on about how great the Dreamcast is, and it's got all these amazing games, and yeah, it's brilliant. But as with any console, there are quite a few games on it which are not really that good. And I wanted to know what people thought the worst game or the worst games on the Dreamcast were, and I created a little list and um, allowed people to vote on it. And um, I will just quickly run through the the list of games that I put on the um, on the poll. Uh, so th- this is this is going in sort of backwards order. Uh, so at the bottom of the list we had Jeremy McGrath Supercross two thousand. I don't know if anyone else, anyone's played that. Nope. nope. <laughs> is, it, is it just going to be like deafening silence for this? <laughs> oh, God. No, I you know considering my collection, I'm sure I've actually played every single one of these. It's just you know you've just wiped it from your memory because it was that bad. <laughs> well, no, it's it's more like you know I tried to play this stupid BMX game and then you know it just kind of sat there afterwards. Oh, actually, I think I may have played this one once, <laughs> or it might have been a demo. yeah. It's a really bad motocross game. That's it was it was originally on the N sixty four. It was one of those acclaim games, and it's just got really bad frame rate, and there's just not a lot really that's. I much think fun. I do remember playing a demo of it and finding it quite amusing, just crashing about. <laughs> <laughs> that was about it. Um, the next one on the list is uh, 90 Minutes, Sega Professional Football, I think it's called. Oh, uh, yeah. That was a really late it release. Was, yeah. That came yeah. out. That was like the last football like soccer game on the Dreamcast, as far as I remember. I think we're outnumbered, so just call it football, so there's no, okay. there's no confusion. <laughs> okay, it's a football game, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a really bad uh, football game. It looks not too bad, but it plays like a dog. It plays. It actually plays worse than Virtua Striker 2. It sometimes feels like... You're actually in demo mode and it's just playing itself because and you've got no control over wow. the players. It's just really, <laughs> really bizarre. Oh, yeah. Um, the next <laughs> that was published by Sega, was, as well, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? If I remember rightly, yeah. I don't know who developed no, it. No, I've, but... I've actually packed the box away now as well, so I can't even have a look. The next one on the list is WWF Attitude. Again, <laughs> that's another N64 port. Oh, started life on the N64. I'm guessing everyone's played this one. No, I haven't played no? this. <laughs> no, not really. 
The only wrestling game I've played a little bit is a Royal Rumble, which was okay, I yeah, suppose. The next one on the list is NBA Tonight. Um, now, I've not actually personally played this one because this was an NBA game released in the United States only. And it's almost legendary in how poor it is. It was developed by Konami. Oh, yeah, and it, it wow. got absolutely destroyed. No. Yeah, I've heard destroyed in the in the uh, when it was reviewed. Uh, I just wondered if uh, oh dear. anyone else here has played that one yet. No, not at all. No, okay. Uh, I can't say I've even heard really, of that one. No, it's not a very well known game. Yeah. But when was, when was it released? NBA Tonight. Yeah, oh, I, I couldn't say exactly, but I would imagine sort of around two thousand, two thousand and one. All I'm amazed is that Konami were already pushing out. That dirge at that time, you know. It's funny actually. Konami didn't really support the Dreamcast very well. I mean, they had what Deadly Skies was it? Deadly Skies. Um, yeah, in Japan they had like the pop and music games. They ported over a couple um, dance dance revolution games. Uh, nor they were just direct PlayStation games. They even looked exactly the same. But oh, and uh, was it Nightmare Creatures too as well? That was one of those, wasn't it? Oh yeah. God, yeah. Oh, speaking God. speaking that, of that, speaking that... of games that should be on that list. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, that's actually uh, my personal pick for most disappointing game because, you know, it had Rob Zombie, it had so many things going for it, but then it's like, it's, wow, how did they screw this up? It's terrible. <laughs> no, like, you know, I played the original game and it was pretty fun, so I kind of had high hopes and it's like, it's just, just brutally just boring. Uh, next on the list is uh, Roadsters. It's funny how a lot of these games started off on the N64 and then kind of made the jump to the that's weird, Dreamcast, isn't it? Yeah. it didn't actually improve anything that was on the because the road ga- the roadsters game on the n64 is kind of a completely different game to the one that's on the dreamcast and even though they've got the same name and they've got the same kind of feel around them um i think the dreamcast one they tried to make it more like speed devils where you get these on track things where, like, uh, okay you get set pieces as you're driving around like something will like explode or lightning will hit the track or something like that it's but it's just Rubbish. Uh, next on the list, we got Test Drive Six. Okay, that was another American-only game, wasn't it? Yeah, I never played that either. <laughs> I was going to pick that up at one point out of curiosity, but maybe I won't. To be honest, a couple of these I own just through curiosity. Next on the yeah. list is Pod Speed Zone or Pod Two. That was an online-only racing game. Yeah, I mean, you could play it offline, yeah. but it, it was online. I didn't think it was like terrible, but it wasn't great. Yeah, I want to. I want to say like the original was maybe a PC game or something. That's right. Yeah, it, it was. was. You know, there was something really funny about the demo disc for that. The UK demo disc had, like, a glitch on it. Um, the demo had Pod 2 on it, and it also had a platformer called KO the oh, Kangaroo. Yeah. And when you finished a race on the Pod 2 demo, it would play music from KO the Kangaroo. So when you ended a race, it would go... Oh, that's really interesting. I'm going to have to dig my demo disc out and have a go at that. It was one of the... Yeah, it was one of the Dream On demos from the magazine. <laughs> it's really weird. It was really quiet as well, but you could just hear this like cheerful music in the background, and it always made me laugh. Moving on, uh, next on the list, Prince of Persia. That's another US only game. I bought that for my collection, and I never really played it. And I'm disappointed to hear that it's just a horrible yeah, port. Yeah, it's it's obviously it predates the, the sort of the reboot of Prince of Persia, and it just looks like a generic sort of 3D platformer. Obviously, Caleb, you're in a better position to tell us about it because you've played it, but. What can, what can you remember? I <laughs> uh, played it more like I tested it and just made sure it booted up. No, I haven't properly it played worked. it. <laughs> um, the next one on the list is quite interesting. It's Taxi 2, which is a game that was released in France only because it's a, quite a popular franchise in France. Yeah, the movies. It's yeah. one of those games that does come up quite often on, well, every now and then on eBay, and it goes for a couple of hundred pounds sometimes because it's uncommon. No one wanted it. <laughs> That seems to be a common trend with like rare games. A lot of the time, they're either they're rare because no one wanted them when they <laughs> came out. Interestingly, yeah. the next one on the list is one that a lot of people do want for some reason, and that is Sonic Shuffle. <laughs> yeah, wow. That high no, up, I had really. a, I, wow. I was talking about how disappointed I was with that, and <laughs> another person was like saying, "Oh no, no, no! It's really great card game thing," and like. And I'm like, "Did you actually play it, or are you just trying to get it for your collection, or what's going on?" Because I have it, I tried to play it, and it honestly was not as fun as the Mario-type games like that. Yeah, 
And it's definitely it's even worse if you play it on your own as well. I mean, like I'm yeah, sure it's probably okay fair. if you play it multiplayer, but if you play it on your own, it's just dire because you have to sit and watch the computer do everything. You've got to sit through all those loading times. People complain about Sonic 2006's load times, but my god, <laughs> shuffle the amount of loading screens you sit and listen to that wow 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 music all the time. It's just got tiresome. I think I played it like once. Xander, uh, Xander, I know you you are quite a Sonic fan. Is this one of the ones you've got? Or own? Yeah. Yes, that that's one of the games that I have, and it's just horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird because it's actually developed by the same people that made Mario Party as well. So what happens? So sad. <laughs> okay, uh, next on the list uh, is Exhibition of Speed. Has anybody else played this? Oh, that's the sequel to Roadsters, isn't it? It is. It's a, it follows the same kind of um, pattern as Roadsters, and it's, it's again, it's another one. It's the only game, it's the only racing game I've ever played where the, the frame rate actually goes up and down at will as you're driving <laughs> along a straight bit of track. So, oh my god! <laughs> I'm not even I'm starting to notice a pattern. Notice a pattern. Most of these games are racing games. Yeah, um, there was a lot of really bad racing games on the Oh, well, there's a few. There's a few to come <laughs> yet. Just a sec. Um, We've entered the top five now. This is like the creme de la creme of bad Dreamcast games. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so sorry, that was number five, Exhibition of Speed. Number four is Urban Chaos, which was a PS1 port. Oh, huh. boy. <laughs> Anyone else got any thoughts on Urban Chaos? No. <laughs> That'd be a no. <laughs> <laughs> that says it all. <laughs> The less said, yeah, it's the better. Poor. It's poor. Is, that unf- is that forgettable? <laughs> yeah. Okay, next, number three is Kiss Psycho Circus. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, th- this is one that I did actually yeah. play, yeah. Can you explain why it's so bad? <laughs> I, d- I don't know what it's like. It's like being stuck in... I don't know. Like It's like being stuck in... If you got Quake and then smashed it into Kiss Psycho Circus's <laughs> face at the last minute. It's like everything's brown apart from the odd sort of Kiss-inspired bad guy there's a couple of like uh enemies just blatantly ripped from other games like this uh half half lifestyle head crab things that crawl towards you it's just messed up i didn't even like kiss so <laughs> yeah the fact that there's kiss music in it doesn't really add anything to the game when you don't like kiss when i played uh the demo because i've only ever played a demo of it it didn't even have the music oh, so the, the one redeeming feature had been taken out <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, this is the point. I, I, lit- I genuinely think that you could like surgeon out the the kiss stuff from that game, and just it, it'd still be just the same game essentially. Like the ki- the kiss stuff is so superficial, you know. Mm. It's basically like someone went, "Oh no, we've got this really, really crap first person shooter, and it's not going to sell." Ah, and then went quick. We need some sort of celebrity endorsement, and went, "I know what we'll do." Those kids. They like Kiss, like so. But Gene Simmons was hanging around the office. <laughs> they really don't care what they put uh, Kiss on. There's apparently in Japan they're going to release a Kiss Hello Kitty TV series. Apparently, what? I think it was Hello Kitty or something like that. But yeah, they just seem to slap the Kiss like license on anything. <laughs> okay, before we just uh, sort of descend into slagging off Kiss, um, we'll move on <laughs> to the next game on the list, <laughs> which is um, Ducati World. Oh, the motorbike God. game, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, another PS One. It's it's one of the only PS One parts on the Dreamcast where they didn't even think, oh, let's make the graphics a bit better because the Dreamcast is more powerful. <laughs> they literally just, yeah, it's just the same game. It's even got like the pixelated floor and everything. It's just oh, terrible. I like I like to call it farty slow bike simulator. <laughs> I like the way you can sort of drive up the walls. There's like gravity has no. Gravity has no power in this universe. You can just drive up a wall <laughs> yeah. and just keep going. <laughs> what is this, big rigs? <laughs> what was really weird is most of these games I only played as demos. They kept putting all the crap games on the demo discs. That might be the actually the actual real reason the Dreamcast failed, because they were putting all the crap games on the demo discs. Yeah, look, look at on this, the main game this. Discs. Yeah. yeah, you can play Kiss Psycho Circus and Ducati World on this disc. <laughs> it's really weird. And uh, the coveted crown... The one that got the most votes oh, is... I know what this is. Spirit of Speed 1937. Bang! I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in theory, this is actually quite an interesting game because it's basically Formula One, but from the 30s, and that, to me, sounds quite interesting. 
Yeah, exactly. It's almost a good yeah. idea. Yeah. It does sound like it could have been interesting. <laughs> Everything about the game, like in the menu system, is is really it's well done. If you, if you know what I mean, hmm. it's, they got all like old. Yeah, they've got period music and and the way the the, the menu is designed, it's all kind of like sort of like what's the what's the is it Art Deco like Art Deco style yeah. of the, of the so, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then yeah. as soon as the game starts, and it's like. Oh my God! What what's gone wrong? <laughs> it moves really slowly. There's like the frame rate again is variable. To um, be fair, I bet it was because the cars actually did drive that slow, and it's actually quite realistic. Well, I mean, <laughs> I wonder. I mean, I've never driven a 1930s Alfa Romeo, so I don't really know. But <laughs> I can imagine yeah. they went a bit quicker than that, and I can imagine they turned as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At all? <laughs> yeah, like they were they weren't as fast as like modern F1 cars, but it was super dangerous mm. driving those yeah, those old. I heard of- uh, quite a few people actually died on those. Well, things. I mean, there's no. It doesn't give you any of the of the of the thrills or the, you know the, the feeling of speed that racing of that era would have given you. You know, it's just it's terrible. I don't. C- Caleb or Xander, have you played this game? Nope. No, actually, thank goodness. Probably should have just called it old cars. Yeah, old cars <laughs> going no slowly. S- speed or spirit? It's just. Just call it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's bad. Anyway, so yeah, that was the that was the poll, and uh, I just thought it was quite interesting to see what people thought was the worst game, and it looks like Spirit of Speed is the uh, is the winner or the loser, whichever <laughs> way you want to look at it. <laughs> yeah, I think if you call call a game Spirit of Speed, and then you can't even get that sense of going fast, actually of being at speed, then you've you've failed. Yeah. Massively. I believe it was a PC port, wasn't it? Or I think it might I think have been. It may have been on PC as well. Yeah. But it was a claim, so you know. I wonder how many acclaim games actually make up this list. There's a couple. Yeah, there's a few. All the uh, re- most of the wrestling games were theirs. Yeah, because the, I know uh, WWF Attitude was on there, but there was also ECW Revolution, which I think was more or less the same game. Yeah, yeah it was just with different wrestlers. Wrestlers, yeah. Okay, um, again, moving on, uh, Rob. I don't know if you want to sort of introduce this next section. Yeah, sure. Um, the next section is called Most Wanted, and um, we thought it would be a good place to sort of talk about the sort of the rarest or most expensive games on the Dreamcast. Not necessarily that we've been playing this week, just stuff that has got that uh, sort of mystique around it or has built up a reputation of being hard to get or expensive to buy. Um, so this week we thought we'd talk about Under Defeat Special Edition, one of the last games uh, to be released on the Dreamcast. Um, this came in three different editions i think but essentially it's two there's the standard game which is obviously just a standard game and then there's the limited edition which came with a soundtrack um, you could also get the limited edition and the game through sega direct and if you got if you got it through sega direct you got the soundtrack the game and some a poster and some stickers or something. I think there was like a postcard in there or something like that yeah yeah so um i looked at, i looked up this week it's one of the games that um I'd like to have in my collection. I've currently got a ripped version of just the standard game, um, but I'd le- I'd love to get the limited edition. But it's always been a bit too steep for my liking. You know, I checked this week on eBay, and it's floating between seventy-five to one hundred and twenty wow. pounds. So you know, do do the math there for dollars as well. And yeah, it's that's pretty steep for. It's fun. Don't get me wrong. It is fun. It looks really great. But I don't know if you said what do you prefer? Do you want to play Ikaruga or do you want to play Under Defeat? You know, mm. like where are you going to spend your money? So I don't know. What do you guys think? Luckily, they did actually re-release Under Defeat, and it did actually come out over here. I think it was on the it was on the PlayStation Three and the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. They did like a HD port yeah, yeah. of it. And I That's actually managed right, yeah. to pick it up for like six pounds a couple of years ago. Exactly the same thing for me. I I got it on eBay. Uh, well, not eBay. Actually, I think I got it on Amazon for the PlayStation Three because uh, I could just never find it for the Dreamcast for a reasonable price. Yeah, I've, I mean, I'm same as Rob. I've got the I've got the normal version, but it's um, a copied disc, um, and I just yeah. I can't yeah. I cannot bring myself to pay that much money for a game that I've a already paid and b yeah, I mean, yeah. like like you said, Rob. I mean, I'd rather play. There's other shmups that i'd rather play over this exactly that's the thing that that is the thing like i i think again it's that fact that it's like it i think it was advertised as the last game on dreamcast it wasn't <laughs> no because the they history. ended up going oh no this is the last game <laughs> oh wait 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 no game. this is no this is no this one called crows is definitely definitely we we've got to <laughs> shut down gd wrong development now stop 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 it <laughs> Exactly, but I think that fact that it, it had that sort of uh, you know that mystique like this is going to be it, guys. And this it was is in like it. a DVD case. It was all DVD the, case, all unusual, yeah. Wasn't it? yeah. I got to say the artwork's great, you know, and I I I do like those vertical scrolling shoot 'em ups. Um, yeah. You know, 
they're great fun, but as you just said, Tom, I think that because I've already got it cut technically, I can't spend that much money, you know, just essentially for the officialness and the packaging. Yeah, especially now that there's a re-release that you can get so cheap, like on modern or well, modern-ish consoles. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh... There is a certain type of collector who has to have everything that is like mint boxed and like sort of official. Yeah. He doesn't really want the copy yeah. of games uh, it, like, infecting mm. their collection, as it were. But for someone <laughs> like me, yeah. I'm not really bothered as long as I can play the game and experience it. I don't really give a damn what kind of medium it comes on. It could be a, a you know a ROM or an ISO file on you know for my SD reader. I'm not bothered. But some people obviously are. You know, fair enough. I like to own them physically if I can. Yeah. But yeah, obviously, I'm only. I, I always have to have a bit of a you know limit on how much I spend. I mean, I managed to get a proper copy of Ikaruga and it cost me about thirty five pounds. And that's about as high as I'll go. Yeah. On yeah. like one Dreamcast game, really. That, that was a good deal because that game's just got even more expensive now. I mean, I've got a pro, I've got an official. It wasn't official that long ago either. Well, but... so. No, yeah. Yeah, I got quite lucky with that. If like Under Defeat came along for around that kind of price, like and it was sure, a special yeah. edition with the soundtrack, I'd be tempted. But otherwise, I I could live without it, especially since I've got it on the PS3. So I mean, I think it's an excellent game. I really do enjoy it, and I thought the graphics were quite phenomenal. Like when it came out, like how all the like trees ripple from the bullets yeah, and yeah. all the smoke effects were really nice and stuff like that. Would it would it be considered an indie game under defeat? Um it was by a company called uh, G Rev and I think at the time they were quite a small company but ever since they've kind of like gotten bigger and bigger and they've made I think it was G Rev or I might be getting confused with another developer but they went on to make Xbox 360 games and you know did more stuff. I think they are you know they moved on kind of thing i think they even did like a an arcade a new version of pengo do you remember the old sega game pengo mm. they did like a I think, again it was japan only but they released it on the 360 as well but they did like a multiplayer widescreen version of pengo okay. i think it was that developer anyway interesting um yeah good uh that's a nice uh little section i think we'll we'll continue that in coming coming episodes and uh get the uh get the thoughts of the rest of the team on certain other Hard to find and uh, unusual Dreamcast games. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I know, I know, uh, I know myself uh, and maybe one other person who wears a um, wears the Mexican hat spent the extra money on <laughs> wind and water uh, to actually put themselves in yep. the game as a little sprite <laughs> thing. So that was really. I think it cool just depends on what the person is 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 asking for. So you know. <laughs> I'm more than happy to support all these upcoming games. It's just I can't I can't justify the account the cost for the special yeah. editions, even though like you know it's pretty much a guarantee. You know, but it's like at the same point, it's like when when do you they do like a regular edition, a special edition, and then they do a box set of the regular edition and the special edition, and then oh, they're getting a bit ridiculous of it now <laughs> i just want them to put them out in jewel yeah. cases so they just fit with all the other games really <laughs> i, I actually that. thought the thing was is that these independent guys would start just selling their games as downloads yeah and that you would just you would just you would you know buy the you would go to their website and just buy a you know some sort of like you know uh cdi or um you know, whatever the file format would be easiest, and then you just burn your own disk from it. Mm. That way, it would you yeah, know, that, that'd be costs. interesting. I mean, you could maybe pay like a sort of a nominal fee, like maybe like five pounds or five dollars or something, and then get access to it. And then yeah, it would be it would be super cheap. Yeah, because piracy is is piracy is so rampant. It's just like you know, just that have just a digital option just for people that you know, just for a lot of people who love Dreamcast but don't have you know fifty dollars. Yeah, around. exactly. Yeah, interesting. Hmm. Anyway, um, we should move on to the next uh, next subject and sure. i think again i mean i don't know rob if you want to go again with this one <laughs> sorry again yeah new segment just focus on hardware so this one we thought we'd focus the hardware's got an absolute plethora of accessories hardware sort of add-ons and um, some of them are pretty cool so we thought this would be a good place to quickly talk about some of the uh some of the best or some of the worst maybe so i thought this week we could just briefly talk about the dream eye tom oh, okay. you just posted up quite a lot of stuff about it so and uh, also um aaron you did a quite a, an interesting video as well uh, this was like in 2009 or something yeah i did two videos i did like an unboxing and then i did like a review of the actual like software that came with it yeah yeah, yeah i mean I, I only reposted that just because i'd never had one before and i was quite excited to get because i never thought i'd own a dream eye 
and one came up on eBay and it was really cheap and nobody else bid on it. So I got it for like 20 quid. So That's how I got mine as well. I think mine was about the same price even. Even all they're considered kind of rare, they're never that expensive. So just to give people uh, who are listening a little bit of information about what we're talking about, the, the Dream Eye was a sort of a, a digital webcam that was released for the, I think it was the Divers 2000 uh, initially. Oh, okay. I didn't realise it was with that. Yeah, because there's two different versions. There's one that's kind of like green, oh. which is the same colour as the, as the Divers. And then there's another one, which is the blue and white one. I think that's what, what we have. And when it was obviously apparent that the Divers wasn't going to be the world-storming success that Sega maybe thought it might be, they released it as a standalone thing for all us normal people who just have a regular Dreamcast. Um, <laughs> I say all of us normal people, but it's all of those normal people in Japan. They were the only ones who got the Dream Some Eye. Some people. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and what you could do yeah. with the Dream Eye is you could use it as a normal still camera, or as was intended, you could connect it to your Dreamcast and use the online capability to send short video messages or have um, like a web chat with with a friend or an enemy. <laughs> and um, also there was a little bit of software built in that allowed you to do like vid uh, image manipulation, which is powered weirdly by uh, Adobe Photoshop. Yeah, I was quite surprised by that when I was booted it up because they don't mention it anywhere on the box. There's no Adobe logos no. anywhere on the box. And you load it up and it's like, oh, wow, okay. They didn't mention that. That's quite a big selling point to... Uh, yeah, this. yeah. <laughs> I think back in 2000, um, the Dream Eye was quite advanced. Uh, there was the only other... Like console camera around at the time was the Game Boy camera. And so, I mean, to have a fully functioning, <laughs> what is essentially a digital camera, I mean, it only takes 0.3 megapixel pictures. And the, I yeah. think the videos are like 25 seconds long. Is that right? I believe so, yeah. I think it was about 25. Yeah, I, yeah. I, when I watched your video, you, obviously you, you allude to the fact that the, the, the quality is not the best. I mean, this is like sort of early <laughs> 2000s. Um, technology that we're, we're talking about so it's yeah, pretty it was, rudimentary it's but... still bloody good for what it was yeah, like yeah totally yeah besides the software that came with it uh was there any integration with any games with this at all because i don't think there was not that i know no i think sega did have plans to maybe incorporate functionality into like future releases if the thing had become as successful as it really deserved to be but um, I, I did read a, um, a really old sort of archived article on IGN.com that was about the launch oh, okay. of the Dream Eye in the US. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, and then that oh. just kind of went quiet. So, I mean, there was huh. there were plans to release it. So they it. were actually planning yeah, to. Yeah, wow. yeah. Uh, I mean, okay. and if it had come out, I would imagine that uh, future games would have, you know, given the functionality. like A bit like with what um, Nintendo were planning to do with the Game Boy Camera and Perfect Dark, where they were going to allow you to put a, a picture of your own face into the game that then suddenly oh, was dropped yeah. from the, the final game. Yeah, there were quite a few games that used like the Game Boy printer, if I remember rightly, so you could like print off little images, but other than that, yeah, it was quite limited. Wouldn't it have turned out like the PlayStation 2 iToy, sort of? That's a good point, actually. Yeah, I mean, I think if they had if they'd had run with it and, and actually taken it to its full potential, there is the chance that maybe they could have used it in that way. You know, so you would have had the camera on top of the TV and you could have touched things. And do you know what I mean? It, it just it, it's one of those. Yeah, things. I wonder if that would have worked because even with the PlayStation Two iToy, the picture quality was okay. Yeah. But it wasn't yeah. great. Plus, you had to make sure you pretty much had a blank wall behind you because if you didn't, nothing worked properly. I mean, don't get me wrong, I can't see it being... If they had done that with it, I mean, you only have to look at the Kinect to, to realise how bad these kind of things actually are. But, and especially in 2000, <laughs> can you imagine yeah. the Kinect coming out in 2000? It's slowly <laughs> improving. I think that's the thing with this, that I, they're clearly ahead of their time, and it's the same with, with many things. You get these products that get released, and they'll be released too soon. Far Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and in this case, it literally was far too soon. Mm. I mean, it's very impressive for the time, but the support was not there. Here's something for the listeners. Now, I seem to remember like a promotion for the Dream Eye or something like that, where it's like a Japanese businessman doing like business, and he's using the Dream Eye for like a telecall <laughs> or something. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, cool. And I think maybe I just made that up in my brain, but if anybody remembers anything like that at all, uh, please let me know on the Facebook site. TV, would you think that was like a TV commercial? Or? So it's just this very serious, for some reason I have this image in my head as this very serious Japanese businessman. And he's just, you know, pointing at the dream eye going, you know, because going, and this business ends now. And then tripping over all the wires. Yeah. <laughs> 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 because wasn't it like you had to have the keyboard in, you had to have 
the mic in the thing, and then that was ah, oh, it was like three controller ports getting. Kind used it'd be up awesome and... if he was using his like his his daughter's like uh, Hello Kitty <laughs> Dreamcast to do it. He's like, oh, don't look at the Dreamcast; it's it's nothing. Yeah, I mean, so I, I, I just to kind of draw a close to this section, I think the Dream Eye is a, a really cool bit of sort of the word merchandise or cool, cool little novelty. Yeah, really, I mean, there's yeah. not a lot you can do with it now. It, you can take pictures with no. it and look at them on your Dreamcast. I think there is also a piece of software that you can get off the internet that allows you to get the images. Actually off, delete yeah. the photos <laughs> because that's one thing you can't do. You can fill it up and for some reason they don't let you delete them. All oh, right, okay. On like the actual DreamEye software, I don't think. So when you've uh, plug it into that homebrew software you can actually manage the yeah, it's something <laughs> it's something that you need to use with a um, dream shell i believe yeah i believe so but i mean yeah. it's, it's a really nice piece of kit especially if you get one box the box is brilliant yeah i love the artwork on you that. get yeah. you know the little um the microphone and all, all the rest of the stuff in the box uh so yeah if you can if you find one cheap then you know i'd, I'd certainly recommend picking one up if you're a collector because it's a nice piece of kit to yeah have. definitely yeah yeah. Cool. Okay, that's the uh, that's the dream eye. I think we will move on. Um, Caleb, I don't know if you want to sort of introduce this next bit. Certainly. On launch, IGN gave Jet Set Radio nine point six out of ten, stating, "Quote: You'll spend at least a week wondering why all games don't look this good." Uh, does this game still stand up today? I would say hell yes, it does. <laughs> hell yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean the 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 interesting thing is like the graphics just I think they're kind of timeless. Just the cell shading stuff, and just the gameplay was just so fun, and it just seems so. Uh, and I don't know what the you know, eh, boy, I'm trying to think of the right word, but it's just this. It's just really this. It's just a video gamey type of game, you know. I mean, I I do find sometimes the controls now a little bit tricky to get used to at first. Like if you were playing it for the first time now, you would probably find the controls a bit in some places a bit clunky like well, obviously you don't have much in the way of camera control because there isn't a second analog stick which they fixed in the re-release if i remember rightly and yeah there's just a couple of things about the game that make it a bit hard to navigate like that american level with the big tall buildings that becomes a bit of a pain in the ass but america <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <I'm> gonna just, <laughs> <you know. laughs> i'm gonna edit that down just have it as the intro <laughs> america <laughs> Um, Xander, have you played this one? I have to make a confession. I actually have not. Your orders are to go out and buy this game after this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looks pretty cool. I think I think it's a testament to the the timelessness of the um, of the cell shaded graphics that a lot of modern games mm. are still using them. Like, um, the, is it The Walking Dead? Uh, still yeah. uses that kind of like aesthetic. Um, and I think certainly for me, this was the first cell shaded game I actually ever played. Yeah, it was technically the first one made, but um, Infograms managed to get Racky Races out like a couple months before it came oh, out really? in the UK. Yeah, oh. it was actually the first ever like cell shaded video game, as far as I know. But yeah, they uh, Racky Races was originally not going to be cell shaded, mm. but they just threw it in at the last minute and just got it out quick so they could go, "Oh, we're first, we're first." <laughs> you, can, you can imagine the, the sort of the meeting, can't you? you? Go, guys, I've just played this game. It's called Jet Set or Jet Grind Radio at the time. Let's let's just steal their idea and put it in our game. <laughs> you know, quick, 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 quick. <laughs> Rob, what are your thoughts? I agree really entirely. Like, I I love how this game looks. Um, at the time as well, it was the fact that you're sort of well, you're, you're skating around a lot of places. But I love skating around in Shibuya in Japan. You know, and thought it was really really cool, cool locations. It sort of had a sort of. Uh, Oh, this isn't this isn't something that we're used to, sort of thing. It, it, I don't know how to describe it. It's almost intangible, and it's it's sort of a nice cocktail of a mix of what you're doing in the game. I think mm. that's the thing that keeps it fresh as well. Oh, definitely, um, yeah. I think it's very easy to just fall back into. I agree with you that I think maybe that if you if you haven't played it before, the controls at first may be a little sticking point, but really not that much. It, it's definitely a game that you have to learn. Like you can't just go into it and just get it straight away you you, do, you have to get all the time in and you know you have to once you've once it clicks you know it's one of them games that really clicks once you've sussed it yeah because there's a lot to like how the jumping works and how you sort of like float from one rail to the other mm. and all that kind of stuff it's definitely got a, a very unique feel that's kind of its own kind of thing it doesn't really play like much else you know no not at all and i i think I mean, part of I mean, like the soundtrack as well is just 
just amazing you know it's so upbeat it's such got a it's one of my absolute favorites i still listen to it now just on its own (laughs) rob zombie makes another appearance in this uh soundtrack oh yeah in the american version yeah uh they cut that from the uk version for some reason i guess they couldn't get it right i wonder if there was some sort of deal where like they just they had to have rob zombie on all the american can you imagine if they'd done that in the uk version had like oasis or blur or something in it because oh god (laughs) yeah Um, (laughs) there were a couple were exclusive tracks of the uk one i think but i think one of them was by richard jakes so. friend of the junkyard richard jakes yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> he started commenting on the facebook page that was quite cool um oh, that's yeah cool. it is yeah um yeah. i was just gonna say as well um as, if we, as we're just kind of focusing mainly on how good the game looks how we, i've got the um the psp i don't know is it the ps vita version or my vita oh and cool. it yeah, yeah. looks oh, cool. like it just sits right at home on the vita it's like if this game came out today oh, I can imagine yeah on that hd screen it just looks phenomenal, and you're just like, this wouldn't look out of place now on this console. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is out on like Steam and PS3 and all that, and it still looks you know, great in HD. You know, still holds up. It does still hold up, and I think it still holds up because the, me- the core mechanics are so sound. It's fun to play, mm. you, know? You, said, you know. You said it was a bit of a gamer's game, and I think it is in that regard. Um, one of the most satisfying things in that game is in one of the levels, you can sort of do it like an infinite loop around it which takes about probably like six minutes to get around the whole level. And then you can just sort of loop it back around and go as long as you want. Once you, I, I remember playing that, I think, yeah, one of the levels, I remember playing it for just hours and hours trying to get this whole loop down, you know, where you jump from one billboard to the other, land down on this grind, uh, like ground rail at the bottom of the level and then sort of jump all the way around to get back up to the billboards. Yeah. And it was so satisfying nailing that sort of like, you could do. I think I actually managed to get like over a hundred combo on, like, massive combo on that, and getting massive scores. You know, when you've got no timer. Yeah, it's so satisfying. <laughs> I think what we're saying is that cell shading should be in more games, and not just in endless Dragon Ball Z games. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's mainly like anime games, like the Naruto games always have really nice animation to them and like really good cell shading look to them. But yeah, so I think we're all in agreement then that cell shading games look good. Yeah, cool. yeah, <laughs> more cell shading games, please. <laughs> yes, please. More, yes, please. more yes, please. M-O-A-R. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> right, guys. Um, I think wow. uh, that will probably do it for today's uh, episode, and. Yeah, I would like to um, just like to thank you all for being here to talk about the Dreamcast. No problem. Um, uh, Rob, awesome. Aaron, Caleb, and Xander, thank you very much. And also to everybody um, listening uh, who's taken the time to download the the first of episode zero of DreamPod. Yeah, it was really. Uh, yeah, interesting quite story. Pleasantly yeah, surprised. Yeah, interesting story. Yeah. True story uh, is that I <laughs> went on to iTunes on I think it was on Thursday morning. Or Thursday night, one or two, hmm. to have a look at, um, just to look for some of my regular podcasts that I download. Went to the charts, and we were at number 13 in the game charts, which was really sort of staggering. We weren't there for long. We were above IGN. <laughs> we were... <laughs> above IGN? Wow. Yeah. yeah. I think we were just below um, Jim Sterling. Yeah, we think. were, yeah. yeah. By a couple places, yeah. Um, but amazing. obviously, after maybe a couple of hours, we'd kind of dropped out of sight, but <laughs> it was nice while it lasted. <laughs> yeah, wow. Um, so, yeah, cool. That's still quite... Awesome. <laughs> I think that's just, that's the thing. Like you know, everybody is just starving for content. Everybody would like to say, "Oh, there's so many podcasts, there's so many video series," but for actual like just content out there, people are always starving for content. Hopefully, we can uh, we can oblige those people and uh, and feed their desire for content. Yeah, horrible pun. Sorry, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah. You guys who are here now on the podcast, thank you very much. And to everybody else listening as well, um, if you like what you hear, if you'd like to give us a um, an iTunes review, that would be fantastic. And I thank you in advance. We've already got two, and they've both given us five stars, so that's flipping brilliant. Obviously, if you want to find us on Facebook, we are facebook.com forward slash the Dreamcast Junkyard. And we also have a group as well, which we con- constantly allude to on the on the page, so you can join the group and get involved in the discussions. We also have an email address if you wanted to, for whatever reason, contact us, and that is admin at thedreamcastjunkyard.co.uk, and the website is thedreamcastjunkyard.co.uk. Yeah, uh, one other sl- tiny thing I just wanted to mention is that because this is the 10th anniversary of the Dreamcast Junkyard, 2015 is the 10th year that we've been going, and oh, yeah. Sega Europe have very kindly um, 
I'm glad to say we've teamed up with Sega Europe, but that might be going a bit too far. Um, <laughs> they have um, very kindly, yeah, they, they've kind of very know. kindly given us um, a, a nice selection of uh, Dreamcast related and Sega related uh, goodies to give away. And uh, I've, al- I've already mentioned this on the on the Facebook page, but we've got a couple of um, Sega Dreamcast Collection vinyls to give away, mm. um, and we will be doing that in the next couple of weeks. And we've also got things like Steam Keys, etc., for Dreamcast Collection games. Um, so all that will be, be coming out on the on the Facebook page. And I just wanted to thank Sega really as well for, for, mm. for providing those to us. Yeah, that's super cool. It is, yeah. Brilliant. Fantastic. It's a shame I can't enter because I'm technically part of it. Yeah, well, you could, you could create a pseudonym maybe on Twitter or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks very much for listening to this next uh, this issue or episode of uh, The Dream Pod. And um, I think that'll do it for us. So yeah, bye. See ya. Bye. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Please stop this disc now, 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 now.